Hello, future me. Today is Valentine's Day 2024. And I'm in bed. However, I was able to get out of bed for a couple of hours today. But this has been pretty much my constant for a little while. Definitely about three weeks, you know? And at this point, I don't know if it's all physical or it's mental or it's emotional. I don't know what it is, but I've been feeling it. And I've been feeling and I've been working through some shit. Hold on. Excuse me. <laughs> I've been working through some things and I find Now, I was not sneezing before I got on this damn phone to try and record this thing, but anywho, cut it out. Okay, so uh, I got dressed up today. It was so nice. I wore my red dress, you know, for love and stuff, but I had my hair up and a bun. I didn't bother with eyebrows or lipstick or to shave or any of those things today. Um, it was enough for me to just be able to get out of bed. And I made um, Molly some breakfast and some um, coffee this morning. And you know, interacted with the girls. And I played with the baby. And I sang to her a little bit this morning. And that took all my that took all the energy I had stored up for the moment. So I've been back in bed for a couple hours and I'll probably rest until about dinner time when I go down. But I don't know, child. I don't know. I can't even call it. Like, I have tried to get back to a normal life since, you know, we lost the baby. Every time I try and get my energy up to get out of the bed to go and do stuff and just be productive, like I am so sad. Like this grief is just, oh child, it's kicking my ass. It is kicking my ass. I don't think I've ever struggled with anything like this before. And um, I've had some rounds with depression. I've had some rounds with anxiety, but there, there ain't nothing like this. This is towards me. And I think what's happened is that because this was something that was so profound and just opened the door for all the things that have gone on in the last probably 10 years that I didn't address, that I didn't like actively take part in healing from, you know, and I don't even have it in myself to like blame anybody and be like, oh, this is this person's fault or this is that person's fault i've just been struggling and um my body has been off balance since the miscarriage and my womb is out of whack and it's like it's still heavy um and you know i was made aware of this fibroid and it's just it's heavy like it's still there I don't think that it's shrinking in the least bit it's still pressing it's still crampy it still hurts and my body's reaction to the pregnancy has not lessened like I still got a nose like a bloodhound like I smell everything it still makes me nauseous and gaggy you know um there's still certain things that I can't eat Lord no, my boobs still hurt. Like nobody tells you that when you go through a miscarriage that this is some of the things that you'll deal with. And I don't think anybody talks about it enough. Like the women that have gone through this experience that I'm having, they're just like, oh babe, it's normal. 
like it just you just process through it until one day it doesn't hurt no more and I'm just like well how long did it take you you know and I've talked to women and they were just like oh well it, it took me a year to climb out of it or it took me however long it took me months it took I don't know I lost track of the time that it took me in order to get out of it and I find that a lot of people because they're busy and this has happened with my pain in the past I'm busy I'm working I'm you know I'm serving I'm busy doing other things so like I have a rug to sweep it under so that I'm not really focusing on the pain so much but this time I don't I got time and baby when I tell you that it's caught up like it's caught up like why and grief comes in waves like you'll be fine and like you're reading something silly or you're watching something on the internet before you know like you are sobbing like gagging sobbing like over something that happened eight years ago you know like i think that through the the death of my baby i'm grieving my divorce child i got divorced in 2017 you know what i'm saying like i never really stopped and took the time because i moved into another relationship like right after that was over and that's over i never took the time that i needed in order to focus on it healing and even though I went to therapy and I did the exercises in therapy I went to therapy for a little while but then I got busy you know I got busy the cost didn't fit the budget anymore so I kind of like stopped and then with with thoughts and plans to come back and kind of haven't and like one thing bleeds into the next thing bleeds into the next thing but we really I can't, I can't teach this walk no more without walking it myself. And that's what it's come down to. Like, I remember when I first started finding the queen within, right? I was, I was learning how to pull myself out of a depression into like the abundance of self-love and discovering the things that made me happy and how to be of service in the world without being depleting of self and all those things and so that how learning how to find the queen within is what i was able to teach women when i was in my 30s because i survived it from my 20s but now baby i'm 44. i have a whole new batch of things that is time to heal from that's happened in the last you know 10 years or so that I just I can't afford a back burner anymore like now is the time it's healing time and for a long time I was feeling as if I had positioned myself as a guru right I had positioned myself as one of those girls that had it all together that had it all figured out girl and then life knocked me square on my hind parts and guess what I, boo, I ain't got it i ain't got it now i got the tools right i i know like technically i got the tools baby i have facilitated workshops baby i have written the manual okay like i i know it i have the tools i know it like the back of my hand but how many of y'all know that you can know something and you cannot implement it in your own life that is why it's so important that we have our sisters in our world that's able to be our mirror and remind us of what we said you remember when i was going through this you told me thus and so you told me this like sometimes we need people to be able to feed our words back to them you know and i'm sorry we need people to feed our words back to us so that we can consume them, so that we can embody them, so that we can be filled up again. Because this is what happens when you um, you give it to your depletion and your cup runs dry. And sometimes you can't find the word for prayer. Sometimes, like, it's a simple utterance. It's like, God, I need you. 
God, I'm gonna need you to come through because listen, like I can't do this. I cannot do this. It is impossible for me to do this without you. So I'm out of it. Like I, I refuse. I, I quit. God. Yep, I'm out. <laughs> Just you do with me what you will because I can't. I can't because you gotta know. You have to know this path better than me, and I have to trust that this is where you put me. I have to trust that these are the things that you have bought to me for me to deal with, for me to come over, for me to. So this is ground zero. This is finding the queen within 2.0. <laughs> this is the journey of transparency and vulnerability and triumph and survival and getting back to normal. This is the journey and I'm here for it because I know that I deserve it. And I invite you to join me. And we'll see where it goes. And I can't make no promises because baby, I got the tools, I could teach you the tools, but if we don't know what the hell we are doing, we're navigating in the dark. The difference is we're gonna navigate in the dark together. Okay? All right, cool. cool. All right, I love you. Out loud and on purpose. Peace.